Guys, if you're coming to Tulum, you have to come here. Wow, this is incredible. What's up, Tangerinis? Good morning, it's day three in Tulum. What are we up to today, Jordan? We got a cab driver's number yesterday and he took us to one place, but we worked on a deal with him today to take us to some more ruins that look incredible. Three cenotes, which are super cool. These ones we were super excited to go to. Super, it's just super. It's gonna be super. <laughs> the Koba ruins right now. We took a cab here. It's gonna wait around for us all day. We're gonna visit three cenotes after this. It took about 40 minutes, but perhaps less because he was driving insanely fast. We lived <laughs> to tell you the tale. We gotta start with a little background on the Koba ruins to really put it in perspective how truly impressive the history of this place is. Just the name actually says a lot. Koba means water stirred by wind or ruffled waters because it's next to two lagoons, the Koba Lagoon and the, I'm probably going to mispronounce this, Mekmukskuk. These two lagoons are very likely the reason that Koba grew so quickly and thrived in agriculture and trade. In contrast to yesterday's ruins in Tulum, it is much cooler back here. We have this great canopy of trees above us. This is the second highest temple. They don't let you go any further than about four steps up. We got here about 9.30 and there were already three or four small tour buses here. So it's recommended that you get here as early as possible if you want it all to yourself. So at first glance, it's actually kind of incredible to me how nice these really look, considering they're approximately 2,000 years old. That palapa has survived surprisingly well. No guardrails. Look at this, look at this drop off. It actually wasn't even until 1973 that this archeological site was open to the public, which I find really, really interesting that it was so recent. <laughs> to 900 AD, people believe the population was as much as 50,000 people, but some actually think that it may have been much more than that. This part is where they would always hang the sign that says, play like a champion today, and everybody would come to the tunnel and smack the sun. <laughs> so we've seen a small part of these ruins now, and this is seems like a compact area, but it sounds like where the larger pyramids are is about two kilometers away and pretty big, so we're gonna be renting bikes for 50 pesos each. I got the pretty teal bike, and we are on our way. just finished our bike ride to the big pyramid which only took a few minutes five ten yeah what do you think I, I kind of liked it it was like nice got the breeze on us and, and you saw some more ruins along the way another one of those ball games which is really cool and now we are here at the biggest structure at Koba about to risk our lives risk our for lives. you to make this video ba, ba, ba. <laughs> no it needs to be more dramatic boom, boom, boom. there you go <laughs> this gigantic pyramid, Ichmoha, is 138 feet tall, making it the second tallest pyramid on the Yucatan Peninsula. Okay, so you might not have been kidding about the risking our lives. This, is this really thing tall. looks really big and quite steep. You ready? Let's do it. Let's go to the top. Here we go. <laughs> this is no joke. This is steep as hell. Don't lean back too much. Yeah, seriously, be careful. And if you're really dumb, be using one hand to hold a camera. All right, we're getting pretty high, so I'm roping it. What a trek. 
wow. This is gorgeous up here. The green canopy. <laughs> Drying off the sweat mustache. Yeah, I gotta shave that. <laughs> <laughs> we All right. Go to make our descent to death. I'm not sure if you can tell how steep this is, but I can see damn. why someone was like sitting on each step. Oh yeah. Oh gosh, and it's slippery. I think I'm gonna do rope backwards. You how are you doing? <laughs> this is so. <laughs> Careful because I don't want to go sliding all the way down. I've converted them to my method, walking backwards holding the rope. It's the easiest way. Good thing to note is they sell cold drinks near the base of the big pyramid, which you will need on a hot day coming down like this. Oh, you guys can see all the sweat. Oh my gosh, I'm so sweaty. I don't remember the last time I've sweat this much. I'm Same. actually, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not tired at all. That would be a workout if I, we haven't been working out every day, but. Uh -huh. Having been doing insanity, it made that way easier. But man, it didn't make me sweat any less, that's no. for sure. <laughs> it's super humid, but I think that was totally worth it. You yeah. get to see the view, the tree canopy. That's, wow, what an experience. Guys, if you're coming to Tulum, you have to come here. Yes. That isn't it. We still have these really cool things along the way. Really well, cool things. <laughs> like, look at this. It's this Stonehenge type deal with petroglyphs on it. You ready? All right, let's go. Ryan was just saying that the bikes were totally worth it because even though it's a long trek, it makes it a lot shorter. If you're sweating so much after climbing the big pyramid that the breeze feels amazing on the bike on the way back. All of these Sek Bayop, and I probably mispronounced that as well, those are the white roads throughout these ruins. They actually start at the largest temple pyramid and then branch out. This is one place you can stop on the way to or from the pyramids and it's another one of these ball games. I'd really love to know how this game is played. And like we've told you guys before, we're not huge history fans ourselves, but with ruins like this, you kind of need to know the history of it. Otherwise, it sort of looks like a bunch of piles of rocks. Knowing what happened here for so many years, for hundreds of years, is just incredible. It's hard to put into words. And when we were up on top of the pyramid, that was a little bit hard to put into words as well. Seeing out over the canopy, over this jungle, and imagining what was happening in the day really makes you stop and, and appreciate history a little bit more. So on the way to and from the Big Pyramid, you see some of these bicycle parking signs. So we just saw one, and there weren't any ruins within sight. So we're walking back here to see what there is. hidden away along the path, you have all of this. So if you're coming to Koba, plan on paying 70 pesos a person to get in, 50 pesos a person for a bicycle, and if you want, you can take one of these where you just sit on it and someone else bikes you around for 120 pesos, or with that, the full tour is 200 pesos. On our way back, we thought we were all done, all ready to jump into Cenote, and we saw another sign with another road that we hadn't been down yet, and it was about a kilometer bike ride down here, you ready for those cenotes? I just want water. Cold water. <laughs> We've seen quite a few of these rocks around there, these big petroglyphs. What is this? Some guy holding something? Oh, you're killing it with these descriptions. Some really cool stuff. Some guy holding something. Some rock. This thing. Are you guys getting this? <laughs> So we're standing at the base of this pyramid. It does look like at the top of this, part of this pyramid, if it's a pyramid, is not excavated fully. So it's sort of like the trees are growing and everything, which I find kind of interesting. So you only see part of it. So the grounds that all these ruins are on are actually pretty massive. In my head, I was kind of considering not doing the bikes, but it would take all day to walk around this whole place if you wanted to see each of these plots. So definitely bikes bring more water than we did. <laughs> think of this, Ryan. I thought it was neat, but I thought I thought the Tulum ruins were more impressive. Why did you think that? I thought these were way more impressive. I just think the architecture is a little different there, and I like the location a lot better right next to the sea. <laughs> so we just left the Koba ruins. We are back in the cab. 
now and we are on our way to the thing I am most excited for on this trip, Cenotes! How are you feeling? I am so pumped for these and I think some of them are going to be like caverns underground. So we'll see when we get there. Who's excited? I'm excited. After just a quick car ride from the ruins, we are now at Cenote Chuha. And we stopped by this building down the road where you can buy the tickets for the three cenotes. Uh, 165 pesos each per person. Per person? Yeah. For, for to visit all three. Let's go inside. No more chit chat. Let's go. For the cenotes, you have to wash everything off because sunscreens and makeup and lotion can ruin the water in the natural habitat down there. And they only permit biodegradable sunscreen at the cenotes. Oh my gosh, this is so steep and we're like going down into this freaking cave. I'm super curious to know what this is gonna look like. Oh my gosh. I'm just taking it really slowly. Wow. Because I'm so hot that this feels freezing. Cha is it? <laughs> Chan Chanka Ta Cha. Ha. Ha. <laughs> okay. So I think this one's even deeper than the last one. And more There's... stairs to get to it. Oh my gosh. And more people. Yeah, there were two big tour buses out front. So this seems like one that the earlier you get to, the better. Oh, that's freaking high. Okay. That's one way to enter. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. Oh my goodness. Are we actually going to jump from here? This is so high. Oh. Oh. It's so high. Oh, there's a lower platform. Okay, this platform's a little more manageable to me. So shockingly, we have this to ourselves at the moment but there's two tour buses outside, so there's probably going to be like 100 people down here shortly. Oh my gosh, I'm shaking just going down these stairs. The thought of jumping from that high platform. How about from here? I'm, I might do that one. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is so big. Way bigger than the last one. Wow, this is incredible. And deep too, like yeah. you can't even see the bottom towards the middle. All right, I'm going up. That was really cool. We got here right before the bus came with a bunch of people in it. I'll tell you what though, if you jump from that high platform, do so Watch at your own out. risk. I, I haven't said this in a video, but about a week ago I thought I broke this finger. It got really swollen and it's like all black and blue. I was fighting off a bear or something. <laughs> or playing with Alaska. <laughs> but I, I, I think I just sprained it. Well, when I jumped off this high one here, It just made it worse, so I'm not in the best of shape right now. On, and on the same jump, I chipped my front tooth, so. Watch out, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, I thought this one was really cool. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Really gorgeous and super deep, way deeper yeah. than the other one. We're at our third cenote of the day. It's called something like Mul Mulhunha. <laughs> Probably butchered that. But All right, let's go in. Our third and last. Let's do it.
Okay, so this is just going to be your round of stairs going down the hallway. <laughs> you can't see how deep it is, but the stairs keep going and you keep going in circles. I think the sign said you go down 18 meters. So about 60 feet underground. <laughs> so we're inside this third one now. It's kind of loud because I think they have like a dehumidifier or something. But when I was swimming out there, I was kind of terrified to be able to see how deep it is because it is really, really deep and cold. <laughs> My finger hurts a little too much to swim in this one, but all of these are just incredible. Highly recommended. Yeah. The thing I was most excited for, cenotes, did not disappoint. I want to see no. so many more now. Yeah, right. <laughs> This one might have been my favorite from the three. Really? I, it was so clear, you could see the bottom and it was so giant. They all have their own flavor. Um, and <laughs> He tasted. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they were all, all three unique, what, all three really cool. What was your favorite? Well, the one that injured me <laughs> may have been my favorite if I didn't get hurt there. <laughs> I thought it was cool that you could dive in, although that was terrifying for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, I liked all three of them a lot. Yeah, you're right though, they each have their own unique style. So we worked up quite an appetite and a thirst with all of the stairs up and down the cenotes and walking around the huge grounds of the Cobo Ruins. So we are at this restaurant and sitting on... We're on swings. Swings. This How is cool so is cool. This? <laughs> <laughs> really entertaining. We're at a restaurant called La Malquerida. What is that? The bad place? Oh, is it? I don't know. This is, fun. Yay, this is so cool. I'm like a kid again. A kid who gets to drink margaritas. <laughs> I'm so entertained by these chairs. I think it could probably take like two hours to bring the food out and I'd just be like, Yay. You won't even notice. I won't even notice. <laughs> I got a margarita pizza with mushrooms. The pizza alone was 100. Adding the mushrooms was an extra 20. And yours was? I got crazy chicken tacos. Uh, tacos pollo. Local. I believe they were 140 pesos. And they had a promotion, a promotion for margaritas that were two for 80. The swings, gratis. <laughs> <laughs> now we went just down the road to this place called Mojito Bar, where they, where Jordan dances, whether you want him to or not. Most of the mojitos are 100 pesos or 120 if you want aged añejo rum, but they squeeze the sugar cane fresh with a press, which is super, super cool. This might be one of the best mojitos I've ever had. What do you think? Yeah, this place is pretty cool. There's a painted VW bug in here, like painted all fancy. Kind of like it, it's a cool vibe. Yeah, and they give you a piece of sugar cane oh, yeah. in the drink so you can chew on it and have a jolly good time. We decided it was high time for some beach time. High time? Up, up, high time for some beach time. And we found this place that serves Coco Locos. We've never had one before. In fact, Jordan and I have never had a drink in a coconut and that's been just like a long time dream of mine. So we came here and as it turns out, they have one left. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, big dreams. <laughs> one day we will, I will, we can each have our own coconut. What is a Coco Loco? It has rum and some cream and it's in a coconut. That's all I know. And it's 200 pesos here, so we get to sit on this nice couch, but there's also chairs here and have a great view of the ocean. All right, what do you think? First time Coco Loco. A little more expensive than the other Coco Locos I've heard of, but this is good. This is darn good. Mm. I totally get this. And I'm actually not too big of a coconut, like strong coconut flavor kind of gal, but two thumbs up. <laughs> 
tell you this. Now back at our Airbnb because it was way too windy at the Super beach earlier. Super windy. <laughs> but they installed this blue thing out in the water you can see. This blue netting type of deal that blocks that pesky seaweed, that reddish brown seaweed that comes in and plagues the beach line. So that prevents a lot of it from coming through. Some of it still is. It kind of washes up along the beach, but it was nothing that caused any issues. I don't think it wasn't well, too bothersome. I mean, it still makes it less comfortable walking down the beach, but it's nothing like that video we saw from a month or two ago where it was the ocean and beach was just covered in like a foot of it. The sand here is perfect. Oh my gosh, it feels silky soft. It's amazing. And no seashells, which was super interesting. Yeah, I thought that was kind of strange too. I like picking up seashells on the seashore, even though my name's not Sally. <laughs> I honestly cannot remember the last day that we had that I had this much fun the entire time. We made a deal with the cab driver yesterday, uh -huh. said unlimited number of time if you want to go to lunch, whatever. Go wherever we want. We can pretty much go wherever, yeah. And he This is said, the closest I've ever had to a private driver, ever. <laughs> right. And he said it'd be 1,500 pesos for the whole day. Mm -hmm. But he was so great, far contrast from our last cab driver that we got from the airport. Although tipping isn't standard or isn't customary in Mexico for cab drivers. We did give him a 500 peso tip. But I thought, I'm scared of trying to get you. I thought this day was like the, Mosquito. this was like the smoothest day ever. So if you're in Tulum, we're going to actually put his uh, cell phone number in the description. The of, cab drivers. What did I say? His. Oh yes, we're gonna put the cab driver's cell phone number in the description so you can contact him. He's super fair, really nice guy, easy to understand. He's taking us to our next adventure tomorrow. Before you go, we have a few favors. If you wouldn't mind, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to see more of our adventures that we're having here in Mexico. And one last thing. <laughs> that bell <laughs> so you get notified the next time we put out a new video and we'll see you there